Hello everybody, welcome to Red Tool House. Somebody had requested, hey Troy, I'd like to see more videos involving flora and fauna. I'm not sure what that is, so this video I'm just going to do on the redbud tree. <laughs> okay, so the redbud tree. What is the redbud tree? Well, hopefully it's showing up. It's a tree in the background there that actually is purple. It has purple flowers on it, purple buds. Um, Latin name right here, I'm not going to try to pronounce it because I'm not good at that. It's funny that they call it a red bud. It actually, to me, should be like a lavender bud. But that kind of sounds like the guy that creeps you out at Bath and Body Works when you go in there to get something for your wife and he just invades your personal space and trying to get you with samples. It's like, back off, dude. Anyway, I digress. <clears throat> so what is so unique about the red bud? All right, so this is the eastern red bud. And it is a you know, very beautiful tree this time of year. It's really neat. Um, what I like about the red bud around here is the... Uh, kind of the folklore goes that when the red bud is in bloom, then you know the morels are going to be popping up. And we proved that true this week because last week red buds were in bloom and we went morel hunting and we had success. We found a pretty good stash of morels. But the red bud is, the, is very common. It's my understanding that it's all over the eastern part of the United States, uh, from Maine all the way to the Mississippi, very, very common. It's considered an understory tree, and here's a good example. So here's this red bud here underneath this uh, triple trunk poplar. Um, when, this, when this area really leaves out in the, uh, here in the late spring, then this will be in a lot of shade. So it, it does okay in shade. Uh, it gets a little spindly. You can see this one's kind of leaning out trying to get the sun, but they actually do really well in full sun. Um, since they're so prolific, they can handle a lot of the different soil types as well, for anything from sandy, loamy, to hard packed clay, which is what we have in West Virginia. So uh, they grow quite well. Um, even their pH range is pretty broad, I believe. So the tree produces these really, really pretty flowers, these small blossoms. And what's neat is they kind of they kind of bloom out right out of the limb. So it just, it just looks like it's inundated. Uh, if you find one that's in 100% sun exposure, they're even more uh, uh, tighter clusters of flowers. In fact, uh, I was driving out uh, to the office this morning and just noticed how many were in bloom uh, on the way out and just, just really neat explosion of purple. So what will happen, in fact, this one's actually starting to do it. The, um, the leaves will start to come out, the, uh, the buds will drop off, the flowers will drop off, the leaves will come out. And this actually produces a heart-shaped leaf. It's kind of cool. It's very easy, uh, very identifiable in the woods when you see it because it, it really looks like a heart. As the, uh, as the summer goes along, that leaf gets dark, dark green, and in the fall, it'll turn a bright yellow when, uh, when it's time for the leaves to fall off. Um, as far as seeds produced, uh, I'm not 100% sure. They always talk about the seed pods are legumes, which obviously would mean it's in the bean family, so I don't know if the pod or if they're saying, hey, no, this, is actually, this tree is actually part of the legume family. I don't know enough about that. You guys can quote below if you know one way or the other. But their seed pods actually do look like beans. They look like green beans or pea pods. So they're these long pods that hang down, have the individual seeds on them. And again, very noticeable in the woods. If you're, if you're going through the woods in, the, uh, in late summer, early fall, and you'll see, uh, you'll see the a bright yellow orange heart-shaped leaf, and then you'll see all these bean pods hanging off of them. It's kind of strange. Uh, so it's, it's definitely easy to recognize in the woods. A lot of people plant these trees. They really don't have a lot of... Um, uh, value as far as the timber goes. They don't produce any fruit. Um, they, they, their, their wood is, is coarse, it's grainy, and it's very, very weak. And since they're an understory tree, they really don't, they don't grow large. So it's not like it has, uh, gets to the point where it's millable size. I don't know if wood carvers use it. Again, it's pretty weak wood. So I, I don't even know if wood turners mess with it. Uh, really the only value I see, of course, is its, uh, its ornamental value. Again, really neat in the spring. Obviously, early, early blossoms in the spring makes, uh, makes for a great food source for pollinators, for bees that are coming out. Uh, when the dandelions are first coming out, when the daffodils are first coming out, and then the red bud will be coming out. And, and of course, it has a ton of, ton of pollen since there's just so many blossoms here. What's well, an interesting fact, a culinary fact, is supposedly these things are actually edible. Uh, they have a citrusy taste. It tastes terrible. No, actually, it's not bad. Probably should wash them because I figure I just ate about five bugs. Yeah, there goes one now. Yeah, 
not really buying the citrusy thing, but it's not bitter. It has a little bit of flavor to it. But a lot of um, culinary experts use this uh, as, as a topping for your salad. Obviously, something that lavender and that pretty on your salad is going to really make it sexy. So if you're into sexy salads, here you go. But it uh, has a bit of an edible element to it. Again, uh, pollinator is probably the number one thing. A lot of people like these for ornamentals, so they'll buy them and plant them. Um, one thing I was reading about the red bud is if you are going to uh, plant one for an ornamental purpose or you even try to start one from seed, get your source locally because these are so broad across the eastern part of the United States that some ada have adapted to other soil types uh, more so than another. So if you're in heavy red clay, like we are here in West Virginia, don't order a red bud from you know, Louisiana and say, hey, I'm going to plant that in my yard because it, uh, it may come from a variety that, that does better in that sandy or loamier soil. Um, if you're going to start, if you're going to try to start your own seeds, if you've got a friend or a neighbor or you've got a red bud in your yard, um, you can obviously try to do a cutting and propagate that way. Or if you want to actually get the seed to germinate, what I was reading is you take the seeds off the tree, Put them in near boiling water just for one minute. So get your water up to boil, turn it off, get it off, get it off the burner, toss the seeds in for one minute, take them out, and then plant them in your soil. And that actually causes them to germinate. So um, uh, stratification, scarification, I'm not sure which one. I think scarification is where you actually scratch it up. So that must be some sort of stratification there. Although I always thought stratification was dealing with freeze. I don't know. It shows you I don't know what I'm talking about. Um, but that's one way that you can get them to germinate. As far as trees go, the redbud doesn't really have a long life expectancy. Um, it says about 50 to 70 years, but uh, they grow, they, they either grow very slow around here or they die uh, prematurely because I've never really, I've never seen a redbud more than four inches in diameter. It's not like you run around and see a you know, 10 inch, 12 inch diameter redbud. So um, the ones I usually run into are, are just like I, like are here. They're, they're very spindly. Uh, very small and uh, usually don't don't live very long. Well, hopefully you've got some red bud on your property. If you do and it's in bloom right now, then um, feel free to graze on them. Um, also check for morels because that means uh, they should be ready to go too. Uh, but if you want an ornamental one, not a bad tree to plant. Uh, if again in full sun, uh, it probably can uh, be a little healthier. You can prune it to keep it from being so spindly as you see in the woods. So we have a lot of red bud here. We also have a lot of poison ivy, as you see. We're going to stay away from that. All right, well, I hope this is uh, your flora and fauna fix. I guess it's the flora side. We'll have to work on fauna. All right, take care, everybody.